A very good morning to you. Uh, my name is Malcolm Graham Wood and I'm here at Core Finance TV to do another CEO interview. Today's uh, guest is Andrew Hockey, the CEO of Independent Oil and Gas. Welcome back, Andrew. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Good morning, Malcolm, and thank you for inviting me. It's great to see you. Um, what I do to begin with always is just, uh, for those people who don't know much about uh, IOG, is to ask you for an overall picture of the company, then we'll drill down a little bit later if we may. Absolutely. Well, a couple of core facts first for the, for the viewers. IOG is a, an, an AIM-listed uh, co company, UK AIM-listed company. Uh, we, our current market cap is about £40 million. Pounds. And we are basically, what we're doing is we want to be the flagship gas production company for the UK Southern North Sea in the years to come. We've put together a portfolio of gas assets in the, in the, in the UK Southern North Sea. That totals about 600 billion cubic feet of gas. What that means in round terms, that's enough gas basically to heat 11 million homes for a year, uh, or about three times, greater, three times the number of households in Greater London. And that's a really exciting portfolio because it throws off around Oh, well, over £2 billion in pre-tax cash flow over the next 15 to 20 years. So, very exciting portfolio we've put together. Companies well set to deliver on actually developing and producing the gas from our portfolio. And we're really now working very hard with the team that we put together here in London to make sure that we deliver on those promises and deliver the returns for the investors and indeed for UK PLC, because this is a great UK gas story. Great stuff. Okay, let's drill down a bit, as I said. Um, you describe it as your UK gas hub strategy. Yeah. Um, maybe you could expand on that. We'll talk about the costs and the, and the status and so on in a minute. But Absolutely. you tell me what you think, the, tell us about the gas hub strategy. Well, let's just start again with a little bit of context. What we're doing is producing into a very uh, benign at the moment gas price environment in the UK. Gas prices now are currently up at 70 pence a therm level. If you compare that to uh, US Henry Hub, that's about three times Henry Hub currently. So we're facing a, a quite a benign environment into which we, we want to be investing and moving our project along. The reason we've um, chosen the gas hub strategy is really because it's a very, very cost efficient way of bringing this gas to market. The asset base that we have, you can think of as being split really into two pieces. About half of the gas is in reserves, and that's ready for development, and that's where, really where our prime focus as a team and as a company is at the moment. But the other, the other half is effectively upside appraisal, so the other 300 BCF is effectively upside appraisal to add on. And in order to facilitate all of this, we've, uh, we, we've bought the Thames pipeline, which I think we'll come on to talk yep, about we'll later in the discussion. Yep. So what the, the, hub, the hub strategy essentially allows us to do is really uh, to uh, corral together smaller gas discoveries that otherwise might not have made the cut earlier on in the, in the life of the North <coughs> Sea and uh, therefore create, uh, create very good economic prospects for actually developing these gas fields and then bringing them into the UK gas market. So really it's cost efficient uh, because, because we can uh, use fairly, fairly simple technology but well understood technology. Let's not forget we're dealing with a basin here which has been uh, explored and produced from, from 50 years. So it's very well understood, the, the technical prospect here, it's very, very well understood. We can do that and reduce unit costs and therefore, and particularly now in the, gas, in the gas price environment I've just described, therefore we've got very, very attractive margins. So the hub strategy, uh, essentially the team uh, that, I put, that we've put together here in London has worked on it before mm -hmm. and it delivers by reducing unit cost and by owning our infrastructure and our assets 100 yeah. percent, we have control, which gives us further leverage to be able to have control over the returns for investors and indeed for, for UK PLC. Great stuff. I'll come back to funding later on, but, but what will all this cost if you put it together with the assigned costs and, uh, and so on? Uh, because I know that we're going to talk about the Thames pipeline, but you know, you've, got, you've got costs already and you're going to have some development costs. Yeah, I think we need to talk a little bit uh, in a minute about how we're going to phase the development yeah, and, yeah. And, and what costs are to first gas rather than total cost for so, the project. So that, let's bring on the Thames pipeline bit now because yeah. um, it's an important part of the, it's the key part of the process. Which And you bought this pipeline which was sitting around doing nothing yep. and you've tested it and it's just as good as it was when it was new. Absolutely, as <laughs> new are the words I would, I would use. Uh, what, what, essentially what we did was 
was to buy the Thames pipeline, which had been decommissioned in early 2015 uh, for a pound, effectively. And then, of course, we did a lot of initial engineering work to understand what the prospects were for reusing it. And then through the course of this summer uh, and this autumn, we've actually been able to conclusively demonstrate that the pipeline uh, is fit for reuse. Uh, most recently, just on the 23rd of September, we actually ran a 150 bar hydro test on the a pressure test, sorry not to get too much jargon into the mix, uh, a pressure test on the pipeline and that held for 24 hours and that's clearly demonstrated that the pipe is in perfectly good condition to immediately be re reused again. Obviously we need to develop the portfolio but we yeah. could uh, we could actually use the pipe again tomorrow. So it almost goes end to end, obviously it comes into the, the, the UK at the coast but, and you're uh, uh, up at the field level, you've just got to add the odd spur here and there when you bring on other... other Exactly, and, and, and so it's a very simple story, as I said at the very beginning. We've got some gas fields, we've got a pipeline, we've got an entry point into the UK gas market through the Bacton yeah. Terminal, and we own all of that 100%. And that's really quite unique, I think, for a, for a small company. And this, the, the, over the 50 years of the history of the gas basin, one of the issues for smaller companies has always been, how do you get access for your gas to the mm. export infrastructure and yeah. into the UK gas market? And I think that's what we've solved you, by buying the Thames pipeline, essentially. Right, now we've talk, we talked about the assets and what we've got and everything else. I'd like now to get a grasp of the phases of the project Very and good. how the timeline is going to work until first gas. Yeah. Why don't you run me through that in some detail? Okay, so clearly um, the, 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 we, you need to understand what, what the, the split of the phases are. We essentially have uh, two hubs. There's the Blythe hub, at which we have the Blythe and Elgood discoveries, and then the Vulcan satellites hub, which we have yeah. Nailsworth, Elland and Southwark. Phase one will be made up of bringing on the Blythe hub, so the Blythe and Elgood fields and the Southwark discovery. And so that's about half of our total gas mm -hmm. reserves. So that's about 150 billion yeah. cubic feet of our 300 billion cu cubic feet of reserves. They'll be brought on first. And so what we're looking to do there is to go for a final investment decision in this quarter of 2018, this fourth quarter of 2018, and then move also to field development plan approval also late in the fourth quarter of 2018. That will allow us to get going on the actual development. We have all of our main contractors lined up. We know who is going to actually physically do the work yep. and we are at heads of terms level with most of them. So the main activities then through 2019 will be uh, construction leading up to drilling in early 2020 and first gas from the Southwark field initially because that's the larger of the three fields yep. and the one that we need <coughs> to make the whole system work in terms yeah. of how the gas flows into Bacton. Uh, that, that, that will come on first, and the plan for that to come on is now uh, in the late second quarter of 2020, at the end of the second quarter of 2020. That's good, because a number of uh, companies over the last few, uh, year or two actually have said that contractor support is very important and yes. you're doing the same thing. Yes, and when we come on to talk, yeah. perhaps we come on to talk about how we're going to fund the yeah. project we'll a little bit later on, we'll talk about what that... Tell us about, I'd like to know about the plays. team as well, because I know that in the last year or so you've built up quite a team and you've yes. got... Uh, you know, you strengthen management across the board. So tell me what you've been, uh, been up to on the, on the team front. Yeah, as I say, we're based in London uh, and uh, it's really been a strengthening of the team right the way from board level through to putting together a team that can actually deliver the development of the Southern North Sea project of, uh, and actually get the, Bly the Blythe and the Vulcan Satellites Hub on stream. So uh, we've recently uh, strengthened the board. You've seen Fiona McCauley joined as a senior independent non-executive mm -hmm. director in July. Um, Mark Routh, our chairman, was formerly CEO, and Mark stepped up to be non-executive chairman. And then last year, we added Charles Hendry to the board, mm -hmm. who's from our, uh, from, from our key stakeholder, London Oil and Gas. Charles is a, obviously mm -hmm. a former energy minister and has been also a great addition to the board. We've also got Mas Martin Rusco on the board yeah. as a non-exec. Martin's a great guy with a really strong city background as yeah. well. So we've got a good spread of disciplines at board level. Uh, the executive team, myself, James Chance, who's a former Standard Chartered uh, banker, and Mark, Mark Hughes all joined us as COO on the executive yeah. side. Mark's a great addition because yeah. he's met with him recently. He yeah. met with him recently, and, and Mark's <coughs> obviously worked with RWE and with INEOS very recently on the Clipper South yeah. and Brea developments to the north of us. And Clipper yeah. South is a direct analogue, really, for what we're doing yeah. at the Vulcan satellite. So great addition there. Then we've put together um, a, a, actually a, 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 a development team. At 
senior management level and below that's capable of delivering on the development. So we've got an engineering team, subsurface team, and, uh, and a, a HSE, committed HSE manager as well, all based in London, who can deliver uh, the project. Now that sound, doesn't sound like many people, but if you tot it well, all up, yeah, we're, yeah. we're coming close to a head count of around 30, actually, on, a, well, on yeah. Sundays. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, good. Now, um, before we talk about the funding and so on, uh, into all this existing process comes your imminent well on Harvey, uh, which I've heard a lot about. Uh, I'd like to talk about the timing, the cost, the chance of success, and the fact it's an appraisal well, not right. an exploration well. Yeah. Um, so you know, do tell me about Sir Harvey, because it sounds quite exciting. I think it's important you picked up on a good point there, Malcolm, actually. It, it is an appraisal well. As a company, we are not, uh, we're not focused on exploration at all. We're focused, focused on the appraisal and development of assets. So our risk profile is naturally different to, to, uh, to an explorer. Harvey is an appraisal opportunity. Uh, basically, there's a well there, 482032, that discovered gas in the system back in the early 90s. And so uh, we have focused very much on uh, mapping the structure through the course of this summer with reprocessed 3D seismic. What yeah. that's done is to confirm our initial view that there is a very attractive, quite large structure there. The mid-case um, mid resources are around 130 billion cubic feet of gas, according to our new manage management estimates, which is a sizable chunk of gas and would treble the size of the Blythe hub if we brought it on. Yep. So we're very keen to drill it and understand and confirm the volume, first of all, and the deliverability, i.e. How, you know, how well the reservoir yeah, will yeah. perform. So we've set up to drill the Harvey well in early 2019. We're currently in the permitting phase. Again, we've, um, we, we, we've worked through and we're very clear on who our contractor is going to be now for the rig and <coughs> our services mm -hmm. for the rig. And we've appointed Fraser Well Management in, in Great Yarmouth as the, uh, the well operator for the well. Uh, so we have a team in place to, to actually deliver. We are yep. funding the well using the Harvey uh, facility that we yep. recently agreed with London Oil and Gas, our key stakeholder, and I, I think we'll talk, talk about them a little bit later, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So we're well set to actually start drilling uh, in, in, in the first quarter of next year, early in the first quarter of next year. Once we have the results, then we'll be able to look and see how we fit it into the overall development scheme, because it may be possible, if Harvey is exciting enough yeah. in terms of its results, it may be possible to accelerate it in the yeah. course of the overall development uh, and, and, and bring it on uh, in, in, in as either in between phase one and two or at the early <coughs> part yeah. of, uh, early part of uh, phase two. So we're very excited by the, the, the opportunity there at Harvey. Brilliant. Right, a key question now. Yes. We want to talk about, I need to talk about the funding. Yeah. It's a big programme. You said there's a, a lot of BCF <coughs> in there, and so far it's been funded by several rounds of debt from London Group, which we'll talk, you can talk about now. Um, but obviously I would expect uh, the, the next phases of the business uh, to be funded by a sort of combination of debt, new debt, senior debt, yeah. and of course some equity. Yeah. Um, this is your chance now to give us a big run through of what... Uh, how are you going to fund this Very wonderful good, project? Very good, obviously one of the questions I'm always asked is, well, how are you going to fund this? You've got, you know, you've got 600 billion cubic feet in the portfolio in total. Your Southern North Sea project is half of that, the development project we've just been running through there. Um, and, and, of course, it's a perfectly reasonable question. I, I should say, first of all, really, I should um, give credit to our main stakeholder, London Oil & Gas, who've supported us to this point with yeah. two £10 million convertible loans and then recently the Harvey facility that we, we, yeah. we've also signed up to with them. That's allowed us to get to the point where we can contemplate final inv investment decision, uh, which is where we're at today and what we're working very hard on at the moment. So it's all hands to the pump now to deliver the funding for the development project. Right. And that really has four pillars to it. Uh, the first pillar and the largest, the largest proportion of the funds that we'll take on to, to, to execute the development will be uh, senior debt. Uh, senior debt facility, and we've been looking at a number of opportunities uh, for that. One of them is the Nordic bond market. The second key pillar to the funding is then junior debt. Uh, probably that will come in conjunction with an agreement with a, a, an off-taker who agrees to take our gas and provides mm -hmm. upfront funding for us to use for the development. There will, of course, be <coughs> an equity capital markets element, so we will need to raise some e equity to go alongside the debt to fund the development, and, and the fourth pillar will be uh, an element of uh, contractor 
deferral essentially funding and deferral extended supplier credit as well yeah, yeah. and you know you can probably work out what the proportions of those four pieces <laughs> are that the junior and the capital markets piece will be roughly equal the senior debt will will form the bulk of yeah. of the package so the team in in london led by james chance our cfo is currently working flat out really to get all of this I I into place uh, and, and that's really uh, consuming most of our time at the moment. I think that's the... Yeah, so uh, a pretty important uh, few weeks and months ahead. Extraordinary on, on that, important. On that, on that, the next process. quarter is really extraordinary important, Mal Malcolm, Fantastic. for the company, yes, going forward. It's very, very busy. It I seems, very it busy. seems <laughs> um, it, Therefore, it's an odd question to ask, but clearly, with so much on your plate, you're, you're, you're tied up with a number of things. But historically, you've always said you might make further acquisitions and license rounds and so on and so forth. Um, uh, is that still part of the strategy? I know you've been involved in license rounds. And, Absolutely. And so, and I, so there are a couple of elements to this. I think we come back to the pipeline again because the pipeline is such a good locus for drawing yeah. in gas that as well as delivering our own development portfolio at the Blythe and the Vulcan Satellites Hub, we can also, as we've demonstrated in the 30th licensing round, we can also bid for uh, existing gas discoveries that haven't been developed yet bring them into the portfolio and then you leverage our position, 100% position in the pipeline to bring them into Bacton and preserve margins again and in, indeed improve margins hugely because we don't have to pay a transport tariff for our pipeline. Yeah. You know, we're in full control of who comes yeah. into it. So we can bring things in like Goddard and Abbeydale that we picked up in the licensing round. I've always already mentioned that Harvey's a perfect candidate to yeah. come in through the pipeline. So that's the first element. The first element is that we can bring uh, appraisal opportunities into our portfolio and use the pipeline to deliver them. That's yeah. great. And then, of course, we are also looking all the time at what's out there in the market. Yeah. I think it's fair to say we prefer to get into bilateral conversations if we possibly can. Yeah. Uh, processes can be, can be more difficult, but we don't rule them out. And so, yes, we are looking at what can be done, mm. uh, particularly focused on the UK Southern North mm. Sea gas basin around us, yeah. uh, where we could pick up some, uh, produ uh, uh, some production to, just to provide a cash flow base within the company yeah. and actually to, to, to grow the company and move us forward as we go yeah. through the development. So very much focused uh, on, the, on the development project, but with a, mm. an eye all the time on what we, could, what we could be doing in terms of M&A. Yeah, and so there are two things that, that make me sort of further question that one. First of all is that there must, I've noticed that there are other companies vacating Southern North Sea, which you might be able to, 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 to take over or, or take their asset base or whatever. And the second thing is you probably consider taking third party gas in the pipeline and charging them a tariff if it was possible, is that? That's yeah. absolutely correct. And it, you know, the opportunities just multiply with this pipeline. It's, it's great because we're bringing our own project through. We can bring our own add-on gas through, through yeah. appraisal and further development and we can potentially tariff, um, tariff third parties through our pipeline. What you've seen happening in the gas basin recently, some major events really, Thedlethorpe Terminal is going to close. Yeah. Uh, so gas that came through the Lincolnshire offshore gas gathering system into Thedlethorpe won't be coming in anymore. So there are a number of redevelopment opportunities out there. And there are a number of other opportunities in the basin around us within, sort of 50, within a 50 kilometer concentric circle yeah. that could easily be brought into yeah. our pipeline as well. So we're seeing stranded gas that hasn't yet been developed we're seeing possible redevelopment opportunities, and of course, we're all see, also seeing opportunities in the licensing round, which we demonstrated we, we, yeah, we will act yeah. on if, if we're given the, the chance. Well, time passes. It always goes very quickly, Andrew. And uh, before I, I let you go, I'd just like to ask you the sort of final question. Um, given everything that you've told me today, which has been fantastically helpful, yep. which I'm most grateful, um, perhaps you could give me an idea of where you see. Um, IOG over the next 12, 12 to 18 months? Well, I think there's some great news coming, uh, obviously. I think the, 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 obvious, the first thing to come um, is hopefully that the news that we have got fully funded for the development. We're really looking forward to that final investment decision and then field development plan approval. That, that's essential that we get that to move the development along. In parallel with that, we've also got the Harvey appraisal well, which, uh, which is really course, looking yeah. good. <laughs> and then we'll be kicking off on a 
Then we'll be kicking off on a, a journey to first gas in, in, in the middle of 2020, which is going to involve in phase one the drilling of five development wells, the placing of two platforms and a, a subsea tieback. So really a major then a major engineering and uh, construction phase to get us to drilling wells in, in uh, early 2020 to deliver first gas. So first gas, of course, will be the, the, the biggest news item <laughs> of all. Uh, well, that's, that's not for a few months yet. And alongside that, I've spoken already that we're keeping one eye on, on what we could yeah. do in terms of M&A activity as well and growing the portfolio. So there's a lot for investors to look forward to. And I just reiterate, this is a really good, simple gas story. We have the fields, we have the pipeline, we have the entry point to the market, and we have a sizable chunk of gas to bring in. And the margins are very, very high. And we're looking at a very attractive uh, commodity price market at the moment for, for, for UK North Sea gas. The UK uh, used to produce all of its gas 15 years ago. We, all of our gas came in uh, from, our own, uh, from, from our own assets in, in the UK, Southern North Sea. Now we rely on about 60% of imports. So this helps reduce the reliance on imports. It's good Brilliant. for UK PLC and it's good for investors. Thank you, Martin. Uh, <laughs> I apologise well if said. I banged on no, again. No, no. Thank you very much indeed. Thank right. you. Thank you very much, Thank Andrew. You. Um, Andrew Hockey has been my guest today. He's the CEO of uh, Independent Oil and Gas. My name is Malcolm Graham Wood. This has been Core TV Finance with another CEO interview. Thank you very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye now.